Oh, thanks a million. Thanks a million. Thank you. Woo! It's nice to finally get out of here. So you always hear that communication is 90% nonverbal. And I think that accents play a big impact in what people think they hear. So if you're a super intelligent little Irish man, and you just happen to be wearing a green suit, and you shout out, I've discovered a cure for cancer. The only thing people are gonna hear is, they're always after me lucky charms. <laughs> and they're gonna go, that's so cute. Did you, hey, come here, come here, come here. Say it again, say it again. No, seriously, I've discovered a cure for cancer. Oh, no, no, did you do? That's classic. Even Bono has changed his Irish accent so he could sound a bit more like, well, like God. <laughs> the world is broken. Bono will make it better. People in the north of Ireland have been fighting for hundreds of years and I think it's because they just sound so angry. How are you doing today, Jim? Isn't that a beautiful day? You sound very angry. Why are you shouting at me? I'm not shouting. You started it. Right, that's it. We're enemies for the next 500 years. <laughs> Even the ducks are angry. Quack! <laughs> Shut your face, I'm going as quack as I can. <laughs> Think about it. <clears throat> no. But then you have the upper crust English accent, right? Always sounds very clever. It doesn't matter what kind of gibberish you're saying, right? So, so look, look how clever the chaps are on Downton Abbey. Do you love him? I don't know, Papa. <laughs> it's your duty. If we're going to save Downton, you must marry this hamster. <laughs> and it sounds very clever. And that's the kind of accent you want to have. If you were going to, uh, to get brain surgery, you'd want to know that your, your surgeon was very, very clever. Hey, Leo. My name is Simon St. John Smythe. <laughs> and I'll be your surgeon. I've been to Oxford for 10 years. Damn, you got a pretty mouth. <laughs> Woo! You sound clever like one of them rocket scientists. Woo! Slice me open, Doc, let's go. But not every English accent sounds clever. Have you ever heard David Beckham being interviewed? So David, talk to us about your greatest accomplishments. Uh, well, I did marry that bird from the Spice Girls, right? That was pretty good. Um, like the posh one, not the tarty one. And um, one time I finished a jigsaw in two and a half weeks. <laughs> Jeez, what, what's so great about that? Well, it said three to five years on the box. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Last year I arrived in London and I went up to the information booth at Heathrow Airport and I said, hey, I need to find a cab. He goes, all right, here's a go. You follow me here, right? You want to take your plate to me, right? And uh, you want to head down to Frog and Toad, right? Up the apples and pears, right? And then use your mince pies to take the butcher's hook and there's the jam jars. All right, you follow me? All right, so butchers and me. That's right, Paddy, off you go. Good luck. But nothing can beat the confusion that must be caused every day with air traffic control in Scotland. Hello, Glasgow. I, uh, this is Air France. I want to land my airplane in your airport, so uh, please let me through. <laughs> See you, Mr. Frenchy Froggy Man, eh? Here's <laughs> what you do with your airplane, eh? And that, like. Echo Bravo Foxtrot Kilt Haggis Seven Names. Hold on a minute, I've got Air India coming in on the other lane. Hey Gupta, what are you up to? <laughs> hey Lord, this is Air India. And this is Gupta Poonanin Singh. That's right, it's GPS. I'm back. Last year I was in the car, now I'm flying the plane. <laughs> Holy cow.
Okay, listen. We are having a bit of trouble. We are going to be late. A goat and a chicken have gotten out of the overhead. And are having a big fight in the cockpit. And it's weird, but the chicken looks really like my late grandfather. It, it really could be him. <laughs> so please hold while I get a supervisor. <laughs> so, so Americans, let's go Americans. So how do, um, you know, Americans across the world, everybody thinks, wow, what a great country. You know, you've pretty much got everything you want, but, you know, complain about some, you know, silly things every so often. So imagine people in Estonia watching the Kardashians. Oh my God, Chloe, I have such a problem. I have 300 pairs of shoes and I don't know which one to wear. <laughs> such a problem. And my mom is divorcing the scarecrow dude. My, my whole life is totally falling apart. And the guy in Estonia is going, well, this is a medical problem? That is not a problem. Yesterday, I saw so hungry, I ate my own hand. That is problem. I changed channel. There we go, pimp my donkey. That's a show. <laughs> so stereotypes. How does Notre Dame get away with having a team called the Fuit Neurisch? with a pugnacious little drunk Irish person as a mascot. I mean, what if all the schools did that? Hey, who are the uh, fighting Irish playing today, Bob? Well, they got a tough one against the, uh, the bad driving Asians. Yeah. <laughs> Look at their mascot, Crashy. Look at him just wandering all over the field there, bumping into stuff. <laughs> I tell you. Isn't it great making fun of immigrants, Bob? Gee whiz, it sure is. They are hilarious. <laughs> so the last group I want to, uh, you know, say thank you to is all the immigrants in this country who work so hard, right? Um, and I know one group in particular, the group that cleans rental cars, I think I know who they are because every single time I rent a car, I'm driving out of the airport and I switch on the radio to Cuando libro santenache, barbata el de pache, but te 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 So to my South American friends who are cleaning my rental cars, I just want to say to you, buenas noches, gracias. And to everybody else, thank you for your attention and good night. <laughs>